afternoon, Don. It's nice to have you here, and uh, I want to welcome you to my professional studio, <laughs> temporary <laughs> studio. Just kidding, folks. Anyway, uh, Donna, uh, we're here to talk a little bit about uh, precinct caucuses, which are coming up on the 25th of February, correct? That's correct. In the yes. state of Minnesota. Yeah. And um, I want to dispel any confusion between the primary, which uh, is held on March 3rd, and that's a presidential primary only. Is that correct? That's correct, yes, absolutely. So, yeah, thank you for having me here, Marcy. This is just lovely, and it's wonderful to, to be here and be able to talk about this. Um, I brought a couple of props with me because I'm a visual person, so I thought maybe that would help out a little bit. Um, so as we begin to talk about this, I can bring those out. But, yeah, our precinct coxes are coming up February 25th. So, and could you give the time of it as a general uh, overall view? They're all going to start at the same time. That's correct. But they're going to be held in different places in the city because of the districts that you're in. Is that your legislative district determination or is it the Senate district determination? So that people know what they need to look for if they go on the website in Minnesota. Secretary of State's website. So if you can explain that so people know exactly where they need to go. Right. And that's actually the best place to go is to go to the Secretary of State's website, put in your address, find out where your caucus is. Because um, obviously if you're in Duluth proper, you have two opportunities. We have um, our caucuses are organized by the House District. So we have House District 7A, basically the eastern end of Duluth, House District 7B, basically the western end of Duluth. And so those would be your two areas. But if you're you know, in the surrounding areas, if you're in 3B or if you're in one of the townships, you're gonna to wanna to go to the website and find out where your caucus is being held. And they are by law uh, mandated to start at 7 p.m. So most of them will have their doors open earlier, so you have, a time, you have time to walk around and talk with people and find um, some literature that's usually out there by different different either entities or candidates that will be running and um, then at 7 o'clock promptly the caucuses will start. So um, I'm happy to talk about the process. If you want to do that we can jump right in. Well I want to clarify one other thing for, okay. the, for the viewers. It's very important that if you don't know if you're in 7A, 7B, 3B, 3A, your, your address, type in the address and that's how you will find where you need to go. Where is, just so we have a general idea, where is 7A being held? Where is 7B being held? Yep, 7A is being held out at um, the East um, School. And East, then, Junior yeah. East High School, which standing is that it's at the East or Dean. Okay. So that's the middle school. That's the middle school. Yes. That's correct. Yep. Okay. okay. And then the 7B is at the Lincoln School. See, okay. I'll tell you, I really think it's confusing when they talked about East mm -hmm. and East or D. But that being said, we can't change yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> and until I, we get to a certain point. <laughs> right. But, so okay. So now, um, a primary is totally different than a caucus, and many people maybe have never been to a caucus before, and they would like to know what is a caucus all about. Right, so okay. let's start with that. Let's start with that. Yeah, that sounds good. So what is a precinct caucus? And again, I encourage you to go to the Secretary of State's website and it'll tell you right there what is um, a precinct caucus. It's spelled right out. But I can tell you from personal experience, um, you know, a caucus is a place where you really get to be the person in charge of your community's conversation, things that you put forward to the party. Um, and I'm gonna talk really from the Republican perspective because that is my experience. But of course the other major parties have their um, parallel um, activities going on. But it is, it is a time where you go into your precinct and talk with your neighbors, your like-minded neighbors. You're gonna talk about important issues to you and to your community. It'll be an opportunity for you to get elected to, if you want, to go on to serve at the other caucuses that we'll talk about. As a candidate. As a delegate. 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 Okay, I'm yep, sorry. We call delegate. Them delegate. And then also alternates. And so those, so really if you think about the precinct caucus, this is the start 
of the political election process. This is where you get to jump in and um, be part of the process. And where your voice is going to be heard. Where your voice is heard. That's and I have a right. long history of that whole process, having done that many years ago. Uh, and so um, I've never heard about it when I was invited to go. And it, it, it's quite an experience, it's especially in education in civics. It is. How our government operates and you get to meet a lot of wonderful people and and so um, you get to submit a resolution uh, at the time I was on the resolution committee for the state we had literally stacks uh, a foot and a half high of resolutions mm -hmm. from all over the state that were submitted to the resolution committee and that's after they are collected from these caucuses and if they're passed, then they go down state to be part of the platform of the uh, party that you uh, right. that you choose to be with. That's exactly right. That is exactly where it all takes and starts. We go to our precinct caucuses, and they're called precinct caucuses because you're actually going to break down into your precinct. So when you go into the caucus, you'll be in the general gathering space, and then you'll find out which precinct you belong to, or maybe you already know. And generally you have a room that you go to, and then the precinct business is conducted in there. Um, generally we look for volunteers, it's an opportunity um, for us to talk about election judges, poll watchers, any of the things that go around um, our election process, we talk about it there, and then also we talk about issues that we think either need to be added to our party platform or taken out of our party platform. So this is really where it all starts. So that's, okay. that's step one. And um, again, like I said, you do get to be a part of the process if you want to move on and become an election um, person, or if you want to be a candidate, you can find out more about it there, or if you want to go on and be a delegate or alternate, that is, this is where it all starts. Then you go to step two, which is really our, our basic political operating units where we gather together after the precinct caucuses. Those are where the delegates and alternates will go on and we'll carry on the rest of the uh, party business. Um, we will, um, at that time, talk about um, endorsements. Like in this 2020, we're gonna have our House and Senate candidates coming up and those will be um, looking for endorsements. And so, so that's an opportunity for them to move on. Um, we conduct our local party business and again, we talk about our different party platforms, whether we need to add to it or take something away. Do you have um, candidates that come to these party caucuses? Yes, and they're already do. decided they are going to run. Do they come around and, and visit so some people get to meet them? Yes, absolutely. In fact, I think you will see on the 25th, you'll see some people that'll, that'll be announcing for either the House seats or the Senate District 7 seat. Or if you're in one of the other areas, you'll see those candidates come along. But absolutely, they'll um, come to each one of these steps along the way, just so that they can introduce themselves, um, get to know you more on a one-to-one -one type level. Um, so that would be step two. Um, those dates vary. Um, for us in 7A, we are um, convening on March 14th, and I believe for 7B, they're convening on March 7th. So those are so those are dates that you would find out about at your precinct caucus on 25th. They'll talk about that. The next step, then, if you want to go on, would be step three, where you go on to your congressional district. And we here in this area are situated in Congressional District 8. Mm -hmm. So we would go to our Congressional District Convention. Um, that is on April 18th, and it's going to be held at the Hinckley Community Center. So it's a little bit closer. In the past, we've held it up uh, in the northwestern part of the CD8. So it's going to be nice to be a little bit closer to home this time around for those of us in Duluth. Well, and but I may add, one of the wonderful things about being a part of this is I learned about my state a whole lot more than I had known before <laughs> yes, because yeah. I used to drive all over the place. That happens. Yes, yes. it does. You learn yeah. about everything. All over the Senate yeah. dis uh, Senate eighth, eighth Congressional District. Yeah, Congressional but, District Eight. Yep. Yeah. So this is a good opportunity for our state. Um, folks to come out and introduce themselves to us. So we'll hear from our legislators and our senators, as well as um, CD8, um, uh, U.S. House candidate, um, presumably. You know, I know Pete Stauber has already announced that he will run again. So this would be where those candidates come also and get their endorsement. Um, we will also elect members here to, to other state committees for the state convention, or we will elect delegates 
the at-large delegates to our national um, convention, and then of course other party business. So again, talking about those resolutions, they move on. They keep moving on through the process. And that resolution committee is one of the committees. So do you want to just stop here a moment and, and say some of the other committees that you're familiar with that, that there are that a person might be interested in? Uh, mm -hmm. uh, would maybe give them another reason why they would want to go to the caucus because they like to be a part of that. Yeah, um, obviously we have constitution and bylaws um, okay. that run uh, all of our, our units, whether it's the uh, basic operating unit or the congressional district unit or the state party. So we, you know, if you want to be on the constitutional committee, you can be on that. We have uh, nominating committees for our different offices. Um, some, and I'm not sure if CD8 has it, but many of the units have search committees. So we actually help search for um, candidates for our different offices. Um, so those are a couple examples um, of committees that you could serve on, but there are certainly many um, that, that can be served on. The resolution committee is one of them. So those are always good ways. We're looking for people to get involved and people have different talents. You know, some people really like to get into the constitutional process and others like to um, sort out resolutions and uh, we can use the help anywhere along the way. So it's always a welcome opportunity for volunteers. Well, after having been on the resolution committee, I always wish there were a whole lot less than there were because we sit there until midnight going through, <laughs> yeah, yeah. making sure that, okay, the resolutions uh, are somewhere so similar in nature, but they're coming from all of the districts in the state. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get them in the mail only a few days before the meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to see that change. But, <laughs> Uh, you had to collate them. That's right. If there were several on this particular issue or several on this particular right. issue that were so similar, we would just put those aside and come up with the basic one that we wanted to choose of all. So it was quite a process. That's yeah, right. Quite and a process. I, I think, and I hope what your viewers are hearing, is that you can really be involved in formulating uh, the party platform, formulating resolutions, you can be part of that process. So it's it's um, the best place really for constituents to get involved is, is right at the grassroots level. So that's a great, great point. Um, after the Congressional District then uh, convention, we move on to the state convention. And the state convention delegation is governing body of the party. Really, that's the bottom line. And in, in, you know, in our case, the Republican Party, that would be um, in uh, Rochester, will be meeting May 16th. So big opportunity again. If you weren't elected as a delegate throughout the process and you still want to come to the state convention, actually for all of them, you can come as a guest. We're always open and welcome to having people come and observe the process. Um, even if they didn't get elected as delegate or alternate. Um, a lot of times there's a nominal fee that goes along with being a guest, but you are more than welcome to come. Um, listen to how those resolutions get processed from when they leave the committee to when they get voted on on the floor. So it's all very, very interesting, and it's a really great opportunity to, to see your grassroots you know, at work. Well, and another thing, too, I think that we need to mention, uh, Donna, is the fact that um, if you are a delegate, but you're an alternate, maybe the delegate gets sick or, or a family member or issue or whatever it could be, that elected delegate is not able to go, so you as an alternative might, might get chosen to uh, go. That's right. Yeah. And I know that it's, that happened many, many times and I ended up on the state committee because of that. There you go. I was an yeah. alternate at the... Mm -hmm. The uppest part, and I can't remember what you call that right now, but yeah. that's and what happened with me. That's and the, you know that's a great state example. Central. The state, state central, central. right? Yeah. That's a great example too of why it's so important to have layers of volunteers, so that you know should something happen, um, and at some conventions we can cross seat our delegates. So if your you know unit that you belong to is full but another unit has people that couldn't come for whatever reason, oh. they can take from your alternates and that's called cross, um, cross seating. Oh. Sometimes it's allowed, sometimes it's not. Oh. But there's, uh, there's lots of opportunities, even if you're not the delegate, that you might be able to serve as an alternate. Oh. So keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So the state convention is pretty fast moving. Um, this convention in 2020, we will be endorsing a U.S. Senate candidate as we'll have the U.S. Senate um, election this fall as well, and we'll be electing our at-large delegates to the national convention. 
So that, that'll be another thing that'll be happening. So speaking of national convention, that is the fifth step in the caucus process. You move on to the national convention. Um, not everybody does. You have to be a delegate or an alternate to the national convention, and there's a process by which you have uh, to go to, to go be through. vetted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but again, you know, there's business that gets conducted there as well. There's um, uh, all sorts of folks that you know that um, come and speak to the delegation, so you get to learn a lot about uh, what's happening, um, you know, throughout the Republican Party and kind of what the uh, sentiment of the nation is. So it's it's a good experience, and um, it all starts right here with the Precinct Caucus on February 25th at 7 p.m. If you don't know where your caucus is, look at the Minnesota um, Secretary of State website and it'll tell you where to go. And then, Marcia, you had brought up presidential primaries. All yes. Right. Yes. So are we ready to talk about that? Yes, why not? Uh, okay. <laughs> we'll go, we'll go ahead with a little bit of that. Because <laughs> I really was very confused when I was in the political arena as a delegate and all this, there was no precinct uh, presidential uh, primaries. That just started about two years ago, is that correct, Donna? Well, in fact, I went to the Secretary of State website because I wanted to make sure that I got it right. Okay. And I printed it right out here. It says, in 2016, legislation was passed establishing a presidential nominating primary. So really, this is the first time that we're doing it in 2020. And um, the current election oh. law specific to the presidential primary is in Minnesota Statutes, Chapter 207A, for somebody who wants to uh, check up on this, in Minnesota Rules, Chapters 8215. So when you ask about the presidential primary, why did, why did we decide to go to it? Because in the past, we gave our presidential preference, for example, let's take 2016, the 2016 caucuses. Right, and that's we, what I remember. Right, mm -hmm. you went into your caucus on February 25th or whatever day it was, and you voted for the president of your preference, presidential candidate of your preference. And so um, I like that. Um, you got to hear from all sorts of different folks. You got to meet with people, your neighbors, maybe somebody had insight that you didn't have. But for whatever reason, in 2016, they decided to change that. So now we're gonna go to um, the presidential nomination primary, which in our state takes place on March 3rd, which is commonly called Super Tuesday. As, um, I think it's approximately 13 other states and uh, some of the territories that also have the primary on that date. So it's not in all 50 states, 52 states? Not how many states do we have? Yeah, how many states are there now? <laughs> but sure. just for this presidential primary, our date is March 3rd. So the polls will be open, just like any other election, you'll go. Um, it is party specific. So you will go into the voting place and declare what your party the is. The ballot shows you when you go in, you have to declare Republican or Democrat. Yeah. There is no other ballots in this election. That's and right. I'm an election judge, and so uh, when I asked about it, that's what I've been told. So right. you get a ballot for your particular party that you declare you are a part of, and then you go in and, and you vote. And you vote that ballot, right. That's and, correct. And people may remember there are four political, major political parties in the state of Minnesota. DFL, Republican, um, the Grassroots Legalized Cannabis Party, and the Legal Marijuana Now Party, but those two candidate um, parties are not going to have a presidential ballot. So the only two you will have to choose are Democrat or Republican. So you'll get that ballot, you'll vote it, they are separate ballots. So you'll just declare and um, vote, and then at the end of the day, we'll find out uh, who the winner is. Now, on the Democratic side, obviously they have a bigger field than we do on our ballot, will only be President Donald J. Trump or Donald J. Trump, so um, he will be the one on there. So we will um, look to vote at our um, March 3rd Super Tuesday, see what happens. Well, and, and I wanna remind everybody, this is your opportunity. You know, I remember uh, hearing on the TV, and I, I'm not sure which country it was right now, but um, it was the first time these people ever voted in their lives. Mm -hmm. One of the, I don't know if it's Middle Eastern or what, but you know, underdeveloped countries and never had a chance to vote in their lives. They were so excited to vote. Mm -hmm. And I just really kind of cried because I thought, as an election judge, I have seen 
the demi demise of the masses of people at these elections. I've been an election judge since my son was just a few years old, and people used to stand in lines, and we would be closing the door at 8, and there'd still be a few people that tried to get in the door. You have to be at the polls by 8 p.m., and then you can get in the door, even if the line is out in the, out in the street. We go out and we mark that last person and they get to vote. If you were at that door at eight o'clock, we let you vote. We aren't seeing that anymore. And sometimes we sit there for such long periods of time, Don, mm -hmm. it's, it's so sad mm -hmm. that people do not get involved. It's your privilege. Mm -hmm. You can lose what you don't choose to go after. And so I encourage you, go out and vote. First of all, go to your caucuses and, and let your voice be heard about what you would like to see passed on as a resolution. If other people agree with you, that resolution will go down to the next level. And then if it's agreed in that level, it goes down to the next level. But your voice is being heard. If you're not there, your voice isn't heard. And sitting there, uh, making comments or whatever at the television when things turn out the way they did if you weren't there what do you have to say that's right get involved get involved mm -hmm. and be sure that you go to the primary at um, march 3rd polls open at 7 a.m and we should talk about early voting now i'm not a fan of early voting but that's my personal suasion i like being be able to vote the day of, just like you said, to, that privilege and honor and I voted sticker means a lot to me. Um, but but people can't really vote, and so that opportunity is, is there now as well. And so. don't abuse that. Um, it Originally, when I was the clerk in Normanna Township, mm -hmm. you did not early vote unless you had a legitimate reason you were not in the township or if you were handicapped and couldn't get out to the polls. That's when I would send out your absentee ballot. Now anybody has any excuse and there's no there's no standards any longer. And so yeah, I have to early vote because I'm an election judge outside my precinct. So um, yeah, you can early vote, but uh, yeah, no excuse early voting is now what it's called. But yeah. and I, I I do like like to add on to your point of please get out and vote. Twenty nineteen election here in Duluth. 32% of our voting population turned out, you know, and that to me is a sign that there's way too much apathy. So I would really extreme encourage, amount of apathy, yeah, I would say. Yeah. Yes, I would encourage everybody to come out and vote, and um, you know, just really take pride in it. Like you said, we have we have such a privilege and honor to be able to be involved in our politics at this level, and and be able to you know voice our voice with that ballot. Yeah, I am. I can't disagree with anything <laughs> yeah. that you said. Um, so do, is there anything else uh, that you have there on your list that you'd like to just cover briefly or pretty well, much? I, I covered it all. I, I was going to try to make a joke about Super Tuesday being like Super Bowl. We don't have the uh, halftime entertainment, however. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not really good at jokes, so I guess I better skip that. <laughs> well, I think just, you made your point. Yeah. We're not coming, you're not coming to get entertained, folks. That's right. You're coming for something serious. That's right. Yeah. Your right to be free is all connected to your opportunity to vote. Now it's up to you. Well said. Thank you so much Thank for you, coming. Mercy. I really appreciate Good to you see coming. You. Yes. Thank you.